Hey, hey, hey. Hello, hello, hello. Make sure you check in and say, hey, girl, hey. Let me know that you're here. Let me know that you're watching this video. I appreciate you. This helps me um, so that I know what's important to you. Um, for the whole entire team, I know what's helpful and I can make sure that I make more content in that area. So today, 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 we are talking about how to work your business um, when either one or two things are present. Number one, you're super busy and you don't have a ton of time. So we're going to talk about that. And then I'm also going to be talking to those of you who are what some people call personal use consultants or savvy shoppers, or basically you started your business because you wanted a discount on your own personal products, right? I get it. That was initially why I started my Mary Kay business as well. I am super excited to now be a sales director with Mary Kay, to have um, my Mary Kay car that I get to drive and do all those wonderful things, all the jewelry and the bags and all the stuff that I've earned. It's been a great journey, but let me tell you, I've worked Mary Kay in so many facets of life over the last 14 years at the time that I am making this video. So if you are someone who is super busy or if you are someone who is like, uh, I don't think I have a lot of customers, I'm not sure who to sell to, or I don't have a team to build, um, maybe I need a little extra money or maybe I want more of a discount on my own products than I am talking to you, I am talking to you. So this is what we're gonna talk about today. We are going to talk about how you can work your business in just five hours a month in order to get your own products. I mean, if you're if you want your products at a discount, doesn't free sound better? I mean, really, to me, free just sounds better. So I'm going to talk about how you can get your own products for free by simply working your business about five hours per month. Now, keep in mind, as I'm talking about uh, numbers and things like that, that results may be different for everyone. There are so many different situations. So I'm just gonna give you some basics, some general information, um, but it works for you how it works for you. And these are just my based on my opinion um, and what I've learned over the years. So are you ready? Grab your pencil and your piece of paper and let's dive in. So this five hour a month plan now, Keep in mind, if you're someone who really does want to work this as a business, truly, 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 um, you can still use this five-hour plan. If you have more time, I would simply suggest that you just double up the numbers that I'm going to give you. So instead of five hours, then how about you work it 10 hours? So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what you're going to be doing with those five hours. And not all five hours have to be together. These can be split up, bunched up. Um, they can be split up into 30-minute increments, whatever works best for you. So the first two hours that you're going to uh, work this plan is all about prep work. It's all about preparing because, listen, you need to plan your work and then you need to work your plan, okay? Okay. It's been said before, I know you've heard it, it is so true. If you don't plan your work, then you're probably not gonna work your plan. And in that case, you are planning to fail. Harsh, but I said that for me. I need to hear it. Sometimes I gotta remind myself. So here we go. The first two hours is prep work. I've got my notes here. Hopefully I don't miss anything. Um, prep work, the things that you do like behind the scenes and beforehand and to make it all come together, right? So here's an example of what you're going to do. You are going to figure out um, your time frames that you're available. Like that's the very first thing that you need to do is <laughs> figure out your schedule. I know we have busy lives, but listen, if you're anything like me, you have 500 things to do every single day, right? You wear so many different hats, but the reality is um, there are times that I waste just playing on Facebook. I go to look for one thing or one person or find one thing. And then 30, 45 minutes later, I'm like, I've been scrolling and I didn't got caught up in some conversation, some, some uh, post that has like a hundred something comments. And now I'm reading through the comments being nosy. Y'all know, y'all. it's just me. I know it's not just me. Okay. Or maybe there are times when I get caught up watching a TV show that I like, and I'm a series person. I'm not a big movie person. Um, I'll only do like Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video. Um, and I love watching series because I'm a binge watcher. 
So have you ever said, okay, I've got a little bit of time. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to watch one episode and then it ends like, oh, oh my goodness, what's about to happen? So then you watch the next one and the next one, and the next one. And now here you go. You've watched like three, four episodes. Time wasted. Time wasted, right? Um, I also like to play solitaire. I mean, there are other things that I love to do. And so I'm sure your stuff may not look like mine, but we have all things. We all have things that are like time wasters that don't bring us money. <laughs> they don't bring us money. They are not really helpful. They may relax us in our minds and cause us to shut down for a little bit, but they don't, yeah, y'all get it, y'all get it, right? So you can find time, you can find time. So I want you to take a look at your schedule. This is part of your prep work. Take a look at your schedule and you're going to find um, four hours, four hours, four solid hours anywhere in the month, four solid hours. Again, they don't have to be together, but I would suggest you break them up by at least hour long increments and spread them out because we are going to be talking to some people, booking some appointments. Don't worry, we're going to get to that. It's not going to be nearly as hard as you think, um, but we are going to book some appointments. We are going to talk to some people. We are going to sell a little bit of product so that the customers can make because we buy the product at 50%. So if a customer pays you for a mascara, really, you can buy two of them, one for them and one for you. Okay, so I'll get to all that. I'll get to all that. But during our prep work, you're just figuring out your schedule. So I want you to find four different time slots um, that you can be available for about an hour and spread them out throughout the calendar. So try to pick if you've got some time during the week, if you have time on the weekend, spread out different times so that you have different choices and so that the people that you talk to about booking appointments will have different choices because maybe this person uh, works late at night and so those nights during the week might not work. Maybe this person works on the weekends so your weekend hours may not work for them. So you wanna make sure you have some different choices. Now, if you want to book some appointments with me, with me, and we do some group appointments together, I'll give you a basic idea of what my schedule is going to look like. There may be some changes here and there I, as I have different events um, that go on. You know, my husband's a pastor. Um, he's also state president of our uh, convention. And so there's lots of different times where we have church activities. We have our own personal church activities. We've got um, state convention activities. Um, and then we just have personal lives in general, right? So my schedule, though, in general, um, I'm going to be doing Central Standard Time Monday nights at 730 Tuesday nights at 8.30, Thursday nights at 6.30, and Saturday nights at 6 p.m. So as you can see there, I've got a little bit during the week. I've got some stuff on the weekend, and I tried to change up the time frames. 6, 6.30, 7, 7.30, 8, 8.30, you know, just different time slots so people can fill in. So that's your first part of your prep work is just figuring out your schedule. Where are four hours that you can find that you can be available throughout the month for one hour each? Now, you may not actually use all four of those time slots and you may not actually use the full entire hour. This is just showing where you can find that available, okay? Another thing you might wanna plan while you're doing that is, when are you going to have time to do the rest of your prep work? Like you want to schedule that in as well for at least half an hour of or an hour. When are you going to have time to be reaching out to people to book these appointments that we're going to book? OK, so you want to plan that in there as well. And of course, that time should be first because all the appointments will be later. OK, are you with me? So that's part of your prep work. That's part of your two hours of prep work is just figuring out your schedule. Um, the next part of your prep work then is coming up with a list of names of people you can book. Now, if you're brand spanking new, um, then you have yet to really have talked to anybody about your business. Or on the other hand, if you've just been working your business by ordering products for yourself and your sister or your one good friend or whatever, you really haven't talked to many people at all about your business, then this part will be a little different for you. Because if you um, reach out to your closest friends and your closest family members first, the booking rate with them is going to be much higher 
than the people that are further out away from you. Does that make sense? You know, like the people that you're closest to and that you talk to on a regular basis, they are more likely to support you to say yes to do whatever it is that you would like for them to do to support your business. Whereas the people you don't talk to nearly as much, um, it's more, it's probably going to take a little bit more to book them for an appointment, to talk to them. Um, if you really don't talk that often, oh, then of course, you know, they may think, is this real? Is this a spam? They may not respond respond. It's easier for them to either ignore or say no. There's just all these different things that go into it, right? Um, so as you are making your list, keep that in mind. And I am going to ask that you shoot for about 10 bookings, for about 10 bookings. So in order to do that, if you've got family and friends, again, close family and friends, then you're going to want to start with maybe double the amount of names. So if you want 10 to book, then you're going to want to have about 20 people on your list that we're going to reach out to. And we'll talk about what to say in a minute, but this is all just prep work for now. Okay. So you've got your schedule set and you're making your list of who you're going to ask. If they're not close, close family, close, close friends, um, then it, it may take triple the amount of people. So if you want to book 10 appointments, then you may need to make a list of about 30 people or more, okay? Now, if you're wondering, who do I talk to? Because maybe you've been around for a while and this is more of a restart for you. Um, and so you've already kind of talked to some of those closer people and you need to reach out a little further, then let me suggest that you use what you can find on the internet called the Frank's List, the Frank's List. And so in just a quick version of this, what you can do is you wanna come up with about four or five names in each of the categories and Frank's is an acronym, okay? An acronym, four, five or more names in each category, if at all possible. And so the X, F stands for your friends and your family, right? Uh, friends, sorry. R stands for your relatives. Um, the A is going to stand for your associates. So the people that are just a step outside of close friends and family. Um, your N is going to be like your, your neighbors, okay? Um, and that could be neighbors that you live by. That could be neighbors, the house you grew up in. That could be your neighbors at work, like your coworkers who are sitting in desks around you. So neighbors can be a lot of different things. Listen, don't let me get biblical because, you know, we, in the Bible, when they asked, who is your neighbor, when God told them to love your neighbor and they asked, who is your neighbor? And, and one of the parables that was told was the story about the Good Samaritan, right? We all know that story. And the basic idea was that your neighbor is everybody, <laughs> everyone. So you should be showing love to everyone. So there you go. You have all kinds of neighbors. Um, the K in Frank stands for um, your kids. So if you have adult children, right, then it could be your kids' friends. If you have smaller children, then it could be your kids' friends' parents. Um, it could be, you know, the people that they're the, the kids that are on the soccer team with your kids or the baseball team or the swim team or whatever, their parents, their coaches, you know, the coaches. So all the things associated with your kids. And then the S is like social, your social friends. So maybe these are not people that you necessarily call your friends. Maybe you don't even know them that well, but you socially speak to them on a pretty regular basis. And that could be your social media friends. There are so many social media friends I've never met in real life, but we like chit chat all the time and we comment on each other's posts and we private message each other here and there. Um, and then there's, you know, the lady at the bank that is there every single Friday when you're going in to cash your check that you, you know, him and haw with, or maybe there is the, the teller, not the teller, but the uh, checker at the grocery store that's always there every time you go on Saturday mornings or whatever. Um, and so there are lots of people that you're social with, your barber, your beautician, your nail person, the people that you socialize with on a pretty regular basis, um, people at your church, um, in the different events and groups and things that you're in, that again, they may not be your friend, maybe you've never even exchanged phone numbers before, but these are people that you socialize with on a regular basis. So that's a Frank's list um, that can kind of help guide you, maybe think of some names that you might not have thought of before. So you've got your list ready, you've got your schedule together for who you're going to call. Um, and then really, the rest of the time is just spent reaching out to them. Um, so the best thing to do is really get a script together. 
get a script together. If you aren't sure what to say, how to say, you've not used a script before, text me, message me. I am here to help you. Um, but there are tons of scripts. If you go on to Mary Kay In Touch, you can um, you can look through there and they'll talk to you under new consultant training or MK University. Um, you can kind of get some ideas of what you can say to book those appointments. But the basic idea is this, keep it short, sweet, and simple. Tell them what you're doing. Ask them when they're available to help. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. I've been in the business for quite a while. So yes, I have talked to my closest friends. I've talked to my closest family members, but I still have other people to talk to constantly. There's tons of people out there that I still have to talk to that I may not know as well, but I still chat with them on a regular basis. And so maybe I just reach out and I let them know, hey, this month, I am working on a new goal of uh, learning how to present a new Mary Kay skincare line or learning how to work virtually. Or this month, I am working towards upgrading my car from the Malibu uh, to the Equinox. This month, I'm earning uh, my recognition as a star consultant. This month, I am earning my goal for gold uh, award. This month, I'm earning this. I'm doing this. This month, I'm I'm finishing up training in this area. Whatever it is, just tell what it is you're doing. Make it short, quick, simple. They're not in the Mary Kay world. They don't understand all the lingo. So don't worry about going into full details and using all of these descriptive names because they don't know what it means. Listen, I'm earning a star consultant award. They see, hear the word award and they know that means something to them. They may not know what the details are or what Star Consultant is, but you're earning a Star Consultant Award. And so I need to facial five people this month. Can you be one of my five? End it with a question, if at all possible, so that they can answer. Or instead of, can you be one of my five? You know, which day are you available Tuesday or Friday, you know, offer them two choices, that kind of thing. So you're just booking appointments. And when are you booking appointments? Well, you've already got your schedule made, right? So you're just filling them in on one of those time slots that you mentioned. It does not have to be one-on-one. -on -one. That's the good part, especially if you're working virtually. If you're working virtually, um, you can book tons of people all at the same time, which is what makes this great because you don't have to travel there. You don't have to travel back. You don't have to pack anything up to go with you. So you're spending some time booking these people. The other part of this prep work, man, we've made our schedule, we made our list of names, we've reached out to book those people into one of our time slots that we have available. The last thing is simply sending them the product sending them the samples. Now, keep in mind, Mary Kay does not want you making your own samples for a whole host of reasons that I won't go into right now. So if at all possible, get your samples from the company. If you don't have samples available at this moment, at this moment, contact me, contact me as your director, as your director. And don't get me wrong. I know there are tons of people out there who are probably watching this who are not part of my unit. I am sure your director would help you send out samples if you ask. But even those of you who are not part of my unit who may be watching this, guess what? If you want to participate with us in our group appointments when we do them virtually, just message me. You're more than welcome. Come on in. The more, the merrier. So that's what you're doing though during those two hours of prep time. And so again, you can split that up or you can do it all at once. You're setting your schedule. You're making your list of names to contact. You're contacting them. And then you need to actually put the samples together and either drop them off or mail them to them so they can have them if you're doing this virtually or if you're doing it in person, um, you can do it that way too. Just know that it may take a little longer when you do in person, because again, there's travel time and prep and all that. There's some extras that go with it, um, but it can happen in person as well. And if you don't have a studio, don't worry. Before I had a studio, I would meet people at Panera Bread or at a Starbucks or some local coffee shop or little restaurant or wherever, or I would invite them to my home. I would go to their home. Um, if they lived in a um, apartment complex. There were like clubhouses. There are tons of places where you can meet and you can sit at a little small table and just have a wet washcloth and your time wise set. 
I mean, that's it. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing time-wise the Miracle 3D set for the most part. There are some repair samples if you feel like it's somebody who more is geared towards that repair line. But we're mostly going to do time-wise Miracle set, microdermabrasion, and or charcoal mask. Those are going to be the, that's the bulk of what we're doing, those three things. But the main thing is the time-wise 3D. If they don't get anything else, time-wise 3D, that's what we're doing, okay? So, that's two hours of your work. That's two hours of your work. That was the hardest part. So the next the next three hours are the easy stuff. So you're going to spend about two of those hours doing the actual work with the customers, with the customers. Again, you can meet in person. You can do virtually. Um, uh, I stress again that when you do in person, make sure you're you're considering, you know, drive time there and back, your setup, all that kind of stuff. If you're doing it virtually, hey, you can jump right in front of the computer. You can get that done usually in about 30 to 40 minutes. Super duper simple, super easy. You've got your time slots already picked out for when you're going to do it. You've already booked your people into one of those time slots. Um, and so you're just jumping online. Hopefully you've prepped them ahead of time to make sure that they have a wet washcloth and they have their samples ready, scissors if they need them to help open the sample. Some people have a hard time ripping them open. Um, and then maybe a piece of paper and a pencil in case they want to jot down some notes or or write down some different things that they, they may be interested in, things that they hear when you're talking about the products and you're just doing a quick presentation. Sometimes it helps um, if you're virtual, if you do it with them. Here's the cleanser. Here's how we're going to put it on. And you're putting it on and talking to them uh, as they're putting it on as well. And you're just talking through it. And here's what the cleanser does. And here's why I love it. All right. So next we're going to put on, you know, eye cream. And next we're going to do our moisturizer. And then boom, we're all done. Touch your face. How does that feel? Awesome. There's no obligation for you to buy anything today, but I thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for being here. This really helps boost my confidence. The more I do it, you know how, how they say it, practice makes perfect. I probably won't ever get perfect, but I thank you for letting me practice with you. But I would be remiss if I didn't simply ask you if there's anything that you would like to take home today. Did you like that set? What questions do you have? There are other skincare sets that we have. We can find one and, and we can customize a set just for you. You know, that's it. Appointment, if it's virtual, literally like 30 minutes. If it's taking longer than 30 minutes and it's not because they're asking a bunch of questions, then there's probably something you may need to cut down. It just should not take that long unless you're playing games and doing tons of other stuff. So that's it. So that's why I say, even though, um, we've got two hours there. And even though I've told you to map out about four hours, four different time slots, that's for them to have different choices to pick from. But you may not use the whole hour time slot and you may not use all four slots. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Again, if you want to work um, with us virtually in general, that's going to be Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, Tuesdays, 8.30 Central, Thursdays, 6.30 Central, and uh, Saturdays, 6 p.m. Central. That's not every single week, but that's gonna be most of the time, okay? So just check with me. Your last hour then of your five hours is your follow-up. That's where the customer service happens. You are physically going into my customers, going into my customers, making sure you have that customer's information in there. If nothing else, at least their name, their address, email and phone number. Those will be great. That way they can receive emails from the company when new products come out, new things roll out. They can receive text messages from you anytime you need to send out a quick update or a quick sale or whatever the case may be. And then you have their address so that the PCP uh, can be enrolled and they can receive the catalogs on a regular basis, okay? So that's the first thing you're doing. You wanna put their order in on my customers so that you know what they ordered, right? You know what they ordered so that later on when they're like, I got that one lipstick from you, I don't remember what the color is, or I got that foundation and you know what happens with foundation, the numbers rub off or whatever the case may be. You don't have to try to figure it out. It's right there in the system and you can get the My Customers app on your phone so you can have it with you all the time. I was at a customer's house one day 
And uh, while I was there dropping off product to her, her daughter drove by. It had been almost two years since I had serviced her daughter. But since she was standing there in my presence, she's like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad you're right here. I need more Mary Kay. I ran out a long time ago. I kept forgetting to call you. I've gone other places and got makeup elsewhere, but they don't really match the color that I needed. And I don't remember what the color was called because I ran out a year ago, blah, blah, blah. I pulled out my phone. I'm like, yeah, you had this color and this kind of foundation and then I was able to grab it out of my trunk and hand it to her right then and there because I knew what she ordered my customer is fabulous use it there you go so that's part of your follow-up the other part is filling the order if you have inventory great put all the products together right then and there send it out in 24 hours if at all possible if at all possible maybe I'll do another video later on about different ways that you can mail from home you don't have to go to the post office you can have all your supplies it can be cheaper than using the post office um and then maybe we'll do another video about using customer delivery service because that can be helpful too but remember when using customer delivery service you have to be active either a1 a2 or a3 status in order to use customer delivery service um and then the third part of that customer service aspect, that last hour of follow-up is just checking in a couple of days after you've given them or sent them the order to make sure that they received it and make sure that everything is correct. That's the part that we offer that they're not getting from the stores. We're making sure, did you get your entire order? Did I put everything in there? I had a customer that I sent two different boxes because I realized after I sent the first box that there was something I forgot to put in there. So I sent a second box and she received one box and she immediately called me and was like, oh, I didn't get all my products. I'm missing this and this. And then I had to let her know there was a second box coming. But I was going to check on her anyway and make sure that she received both of them, made sure that she had everything that she had ordered. And then had she tried them all? Had she tried it? Were there, was there an issue with the foundation color? I gave someone a foundation the other day. It was the first time she'd ordered foundation. She wasn't sure about the color. I was pretty sure I could guess what color she was. And so I just gave her the liquid foundation. And then I called her two days later. Have you tried it? Is it the right color? How does it match your skin tone? Those types of things. So you're just following up to make sure they got the order. If they've tried it, you know, how's it working? Do they have any questions? It was one thing watching with you put the products on, but now that they're by themselves, do they remember the order that they go in? So you're just checking to make sure everything is okay. And that's it. Five hours per month, not even per week per month. And so here are the results. Again, we spent about two hours doing all of our prep work. Uh, figuring out our schedule, getting our customer list, reaching out and booking our appointments. That took roughly about two hours. Again, every person is going to be slightly different depending on what you're doing. Um, two hours of actual work, like with the customer in, in person or virtually because we booked several people all at the same time so we could work smarter and not harder. And the last hour just spent making sure we put our orders in the system, making sure that we're following up, uh, filling the orders and making sure we're following up with our customers. So that takes about five hours. And so here are the results. Here are the results. Again, keep in mind, these are just generalities, averages, what could happen, it may look different for you or other people. If you booked about 10 people, and I'm going to be very, very generous and lowball these numbers, okay? If you booked 10 people, booked about 10 people, and only five of them made purchases with the company average, which is about $100 per customer, okay, at, at an appointment, if five people made a purchase of $100 or more, that's about $500 in retail that you've sold. Yay, that's exciting for just that little bit of work. Oh my goodness. And so it's going to cost you. Again, I'm not doing taxes and shipping and all that, just using basic numbers. It's going to cost you about $250 to place that order, okay? $250 for their products that they ordered. And the other $250 because they paid you 500 plus taxes, right? The other $250 is what you can use to order your own product. Hello, that's how you get your products for free. Because listen, at the time that I'm recording this, fall products just came out in August. Now it's September and the holiday products just came out. And guess what? In another month or so, then the, the winter products will come out. 
you want to make sure that you are active and that you can get orders for all three of those for yourself, if not for anybody else. And all it took was five customers, five hours, five hours, five customers, it all done in one month so that you could get what they needed. And because of what they ordered, now you get your products for free. This is how you work the business, even as a so-called personal use consultant. 50% is great. Free is better. That's my opinion. That's my story. That's what I'm sticking to. That's how I ran my business for years. For years, I never paid for my product. I just did not take a, um, I didn't take a, what do you call it? I didn't take a payment. I just didn't take a payment, you know? So I didn't pay myself. Instead, I just used customer orders to fulfill my own order. I hope that makes sense. Y'all get it. Y'all get where I'm coming from. But if you need extra cash in your hand and you need products, then just double the efforts. You can either double the time or double the amount of people that you book. Again, it shouldn't take you that much more time. It might take you a little more time putting the list together. It might take you a little bit more time um, contacting everyone on your list. But the work is still going to be the same. If you still book them in one of your four time slots and maybe you only use two of the time slots or maybe the time slots only take 30 to 40 minutes each, you can still get all of this done in about the same amount of time. Do you hear what I'm saying? But book 20 people. And again, if I lowball it and say only 10 of those people place purchases of $100 or more, that's $1,000 retail, which means, again, it's going to cost about $500 for the products that they order. You can still spend about $250, more or less, if you want to, on your own personal items, your own hand soap, your own hand sanitizer, because listen, we're going into co back into a uh, flu season. COVID is going to be high again. People are going to be coughing and they're not going to be as cautious as they was, were the past couple of years when people were wearing masks. And so now flu season is going to be hot and heavy again. Cold season, hot and heavy again. So hand soap, sanitizer, you need your own shower gel, your own body lotion, your own perfume, your own makeup products, your own skincare. You need all the stuff. So you can spend about 250 more or less on your own personal items, right? And then you still have $250 cash that you can put in your pocket to pay that extra utility bill, to pay that extra phone bill, to pay uh, for that tire that you, those two tires that you need to get replaced uh, or whatever the case may be. So there you have it. That's your five hour per month plan. And the more people you book, the more money you can make, the more products you can order for yourself, the more cash you can put into your pocket. And you can spend way more time than that because so many of us that are busy really do have more time than five hours. So the more time you put into it, the more effort you put into it, the more people you contact, the more you get out of your business. And you don't even have to work it day and night constantly for hours on end to make this work. Now, one last tip I'm going to give you and then we'll be all done. If you really want to maximize this, you'll do two things with each person that you talk to and you book for appointments. Number one, you'll get a referral list. Either they'll give you names and phone numbers of their friends, or they will book a separate appointment that you can call a party if you want to, or you can just ask them to bring two or three people with them to their appointment. Either way it goes. You need to either get some names from them, book a party where they invite their friends to it, or have them bring people with them. What this does is this creates your list for next month. So then you don't have to try to find more people. You always have more people because you're getting them from the people you already booked. That's really how you continue to grow and build. If you're wondering why you don't have more customers, it's because you're not getting names from the customers you currently have. Even if they don't order anything, they know people that you don't know 
that could be your next customer. I will tell you right now, some of my best customers and my best team members are people who were referrals and or friends of someone else who was in my tight knit circle who never did anything. I'm just saying. Y'all know how it is. I'm not going to harp on it. Second thing, make sure you are adding them not only to your My Customers, but if you have a social media page, like Facebook is probably the biggest thing when it comes to groups and private groups. I really don't know if Instagram or those other places have private groups where you can really do what you need to do. Um, But make sure you add them and their friends to your private Facebook business group so that they can constantly be hearing from you, seeing products that are out, interacting with them, interacting with you, be friends with them on Facebook, whatever the case may be, because as you build the relationship, you build the likelihood that they like you, you build the trust, and you build the likelihood that they are going to look at you as their skincare expert, their makeup expert, and when they have questions and when they need things, that get it from you. So there you go. That's what I got for you today. That's what I got for you today. I hope this helps. I hope this blesses your life. I hope this blesses your business. Regardless of why you started this business, it can be a blessing for you. There is hardly anything that I can think of that is out there that cannot be helped with money. More money helps you make more choices. Sickness in your family, that's costing money on medical bills, right? You have children, psh, that's that's a money pit right there. <laughs> um, from little to adulthood, it just gets more, they get more expensive the older they get, right? I mean, like everything revolves around money. If you have enough for yourself, then you need to have more to help someone else, to help your community, to help your church, to help a foundation, whatever the case may be. So I'm I'm off my soapbox now. I'm done. I hope this helps you. Drop in the comments. Let me know. Do you have other plans that you love? Um, Tammy Craig, I believe is her name, has a four-hour plan for consultants and a four-hour plan for adults. For adults. For directors. <laughs> I'm trying to say um and it's way more specific breaking the hours down if I remember correctly don't quote me on this but you spend one hour booking you spend one hour I don't know coaching you spend one hour um probably on your team I don't I don't remember what they are but basically you know it's just breaking down what you do each of those four hour time frames um whether you're working the business full time and so that's four hours each day that you're doing these things or whether it's uh, you're working part-time and this is four hours over the course of a whole entire week or just four hours in one month. Those are great plans as well. I am just telling you what works for me. So there you go. Go out, be blessed, and I will see you next time. Uh, Drop down your comments and your ideas so you you can all help all the rest of us. I am here for your feedback. Have a good one.